Proceed west on Naya Turnpike in 195 feet. Turn right to North Aramont Road. Nine one one loose change. Loose change is a 2006 movie directed by Dylan Avery, starring Richard Gage, Stephen E. Jones, and Daniel Sinjata.
September 11, 2006, thousands from all over the world gathered in New York City, New York. They wore black shirts, reading Investigate 9-11, and held banners that read, Ask Questions, Demand Answers. This day marked the fifth anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Although the 9-11 Commission report had been published over two years prior, many Americans and citizens worldwide remained convinced that the truth was being withheld from the public. They were right. Why? Why was a growing percentage of the world population becoming increasingly skeptical of the events of September 11th? Was it a natural inclination towards believing the worst about the United States government? Or was it a legitimate concern that only grew more powerful with time? The 9-11 Truth Movement includes academics, engineers, physicists, firefighters, intelligence officials, and some of the very people whose lives have been shattered since September 11th. Were they all delirious? Were they a concerned group of individuals taking the necessary steps to prevent the United States from slipping into its darkest era yet? Was September 11th a surprise attack on America by 19 Islamic terrorists? Or something else entirely? Which Bush has spent an uncomfortable day with his people trying to explain away why he failed to pass on warnings the White House had received before September the 11th that terrorists were planning to hijack American aircraft. What happened that day has cast a shadow over just about every area of American life. Now one of the country's best known journalists has said that the American response to the so-called war on terrorism has created a climate of effective censorship in a land claiming to be the home of free speech. never been an American war, small or large, in which access has been so limited as this one. The belief runs so strong in both the political and military leadership that those who control the images will control public opinion. Does it suggest that there was somebody uh, on the inside? He, he kind of kind of compared it to the Godfather story, you know, where the where the gun was placed in the in the men's room. There is also a possibility this could be some kind of inside job. May it have been uh, an inside job? Might these people have gotten help from the inside? I was speculating about that along with others early this morning, but now there's a lot more evidence that suggests it's almost certainly the case. To I'm seeing in comparison to what you're looking at, and there was a time in South Africa where people would put flying tires around people's necks if they dissented. The fear is that you will be left as here. You have a flying tire of lack of patriotism put around your back. Now, it's that fear that keeps journalists from asking the toughest of the tough questions and to continue to bore in on the tough questions so often. People have to stay out of our business. A country that hides something is a country that is uh, afraid of getting caught. And in particular, this Bush administration, uh, who is as tight with Saudi Arabia as you can get. His father used to stay with the Bin Laden family when he would go to Saudi Arabia. In the past, though, the FBI has sometimes made problems worse by ignoring or denying them. FBI management intentionally and repeatedly thwarted and obstructed by attempts to launch a more comprehensive investigation to identify and to neutralize terrorists. To the families and victims. 
of September 11th. On behalf of uh, John Benson, Barry Carmody, and myself, sorry. You know, I want to say quietly, but as forcefully as I can, that I hope this doesn't go any further. It's gone too far. I am appalled by it. On September 13th, the United States government declares that it has overwhelming evidence that bin Laden is responsible for the attacks. The Taliban offers to hand over Osama bin Laden if the United States can provide evidence. Our position in this uh, regard is uh, that if America have uh, evidence and proof, they should produce it and we are ready for the trial of Osama uh, bin Laden in the light of evidence. Are you willing to hand Osama bin Laden to the United States or not? No, no, no. With, without evidence. September 23rd. 2001. The Secretary of State said the administration would soon be able to document its case in public against the Al-Qaeda network and Osama bin Laden. I think it will be persuasive. By the next day, the White House was already backpedaling. But is there any plan to present public evidence so that, you know, the average citizen, not just Americans, but people all over the world can understand the case against Well, I think as Secretary Powell said, there are hope to do that uh, and to do so in, in a timely fashion over some course of time. But I think the American people also understand that there are going to be times when that information cannot immediately be forthcoming, and the American people seem to be accepting of that. No, it seems as though you're asking everyone to trust you. This information has yet to be provided to the public. Instead of taking credit, bin Laden denies involvement in the attacks three times. December 13th, the Department of Defense releases a videotape allegedly discovered in a house in Jalalabad, Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden describes the attacks along with Khaled al harbi American mainstream media and even President Bush would portray this videotape as absolute proof of his guilt. International establishments question the authenticity of the tape. December 26th, 2001. A Taliban official claims that he has attended the funeral of Osama bin Laden. The next day, a video believed to be recorded on November 19th is broadcast, in which bin Laden praises the attack, but takes no responsibility. The next bin Laden video would not appear until October 29, 2004, days before the presidential election. The video is described as the clearest claim of responsibility for 9 11 and when questioned why bin Laden's most wanted poster does not indict him for 9-11, the chief of investigative publicity for the FBI, Rex Toon, replied, 9-11 is not mentioned on bin Laden's most wanted poster because the FBI has no hard evidence connecting Osama bin Laden to 9-11. Clearly, I, I couldn't really believe what I had just heard, so I repeated it. And he said, yes, that is correct. The FBI has no hard evidence connecting the Osama bin Laden to 9-11. What evidence do they have? Two bags belonging to Mohammed Atta checked in at Portland Airport but failed to make Flight 11 at Boston, containing a 757 video tour and flight manual, an Arab-English dictionary, a handheld flight computer, a Quran, and his will. Why would Ada take his will onto a plane that would be destroyed in a fiery inferno? Iran al Shaki's rental car discovered at Logan Airport containing an Arabic flight manual, an airport restricted area pass, and documents of Hoffman Aviation. Nawaf al Hazmi's rental car discovered at Dulles Airport containing Muhammad Ada's instructions, a check for a flight school in Phoenix, four drawings of a 757 cockpit, a knife, and maps of Washington and New York. Satam al sakamis passport, discovered below the Twin Towers. Well, Dan, not far from here, a passerby found the passport of one of the hijackers. How does a passport fly out of a man's pocket through a 400-mile-per-hour airplane crash, survive 9,000 gallons of jet fuel, and land intact on a site a thousand feet below? My 
of the transfer between himself and Ada, Mahmoud Ahmed retires from the ISI. The 9-11 Commission report will later conclude that they saw no evidence that any foreign government or foreign government official supplied any funding. The Commission decided not only to omit the information, but to deny it entirely. On 172, page 172 of your report, the 9-11 report, you state, quote, the U.S. government has not been able to determine the origin of the money used in the 911 attacks. Ultimately, the question is of little practical significance, end quote. How can you state that the question of who bankrolled the deaths of 3,000 American people on September 11th is, quote, of little practical significance? Because it costs so little money. That's the other thing. It cost us $500,000. We were able to find pieces of the very small pieces. And you said earlier $500,000 to do the 9 11 operation. We know that $100,000 was wired to Muhammad Atta directly from the head of Pakistani ISI. The Pakistani ISI Why was there such a vested interest in covering up the transaction between the ISI and Muhammad Atta? And let's talk about that wire transfer because uh, Governor Kane had no basis for denial because the FBI and the Wall Street Journal confirmed the General Mahmoud Ahmed wire transfer of document. But the 9-11 Commission deliberately said that funding is not important and assigning blame is not important to them, but it is to us. 
As if their funding was not suspicious enough, a number of hijackers reportedly train at U.S. military bases. As hard as this is to believe that two of the alleged terrorists involved in what happened on Tuesday may have attended schools run by the U.S. military. Now, this is according to a senior defense official. Ahmed al Nami, Ahmed al Ghani, and Saeed al Ghani listed their address on both driver's licenses and car registrations as the Naval Air Station in Pensacola, Florida. Mohammed Adam reportedly graduated from the U.S. International Office School at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. In response to a Freedom of Information Act, Captain Jason Taylor conferred that a Muhammad Atta trained there between 1998 and 1999, but did not verify if it was the same person. Abdulaziz Alamari attended Brooks Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Saeed al and others attended the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California, as confirmed by Lieutenant Colonel Steve Butler, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. American media ceases investigation when the Air Force says, we are probably not talking about the same people. Two of the hijackers, Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Madar, rented an apartment from and lived with an FBI informant. Curiously, a number of them were reported to still be alive after the attack. Finally, we were led to believe that the alleged hijackers were fundamentalist Muslims spending their final days preparing for paradise. Yet, in the week before the attacks, a number of them would drink, visit strip clubs, and solicit prostitutes. By all accounts, Ada and his cousin kept to themselves, except for last Thursday, at this bar in Hollywood, Florida. It's believed both men came in, drank heavily, and then refused to pay the bill. And the guy got, like, very, very offended, and he, he said to me, he said, Oh, I can pay my bill. I'm, a, I'm an airline pilot. And I was like, okay. Mahed Maked is spotted several times at a porn shop. Hamza al Gandhi ordered a porno in his hotel on September 10th. The mayor of Patterson, New Jersey, states that they are spotted more at go-go clubs than at mosques. Regardless of their actions, some of the hijackers' presence was known as early as 2000. What did we know? When did we know it? That's what some congressmen are asking now, or, and asking quite loudly. Did we know the year before 9-11 that one of the hijackers was a terrorist threat? Army Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer has gone public with his charge that Able Danger, a military intelligence project he worked with in 2000, identified Mohammed Atta, even pulled up his picture along with three other 9-11 hijackers as possible Al-Qaeda members. We found the identities of four of the 9-11 hijackers prior to 9-11. But he says beginning in September 2000, three meetings he set up with the FBI were each canceled by military law 